Which brings us to the last part of today. Almost made it, still half an hour to go. I hand over to Stefan um, and we will have a panel discussion here and uh, Stefan is going to invite some of the people here to come in front and we will put up a couple of chairs and, and try to have a discussion. This answers my first question if we do it standing up. So no, we will get about, we need about seven chairs. We can do it standing up perhaps. <laughs> so we are seeing each other, we are, we are urged to make it short and... Uh <laughs> So, okay, I am. Please, Emily, Peter, uh, Roch, Alexander, Howard is already there, and Omar, please. I would like you to join me. And. Uh, yeah. And uh, so I think I don't need to introduce anybody else except from Peter. So, Peter, maybe, Harald, you hand over the microphone to Peter so he can introduce himself and his project shortly so that everybody... It'll be, it'll be short. Nobody else really introduced himself either. My name is Peter Bloom. I coordinate a project called Rhizomatica. Uh, biggest thing that we do is work on GSM policy, uh, regulation for community networks, and we also run a fairly large network in the box network in Mexico. Thank you. So... Um, we just would like to close the session, so standing up with some gymnastics, no. We are just, I have, from today, I, I took back even myself, I'm not too deep into techni technology, I, I take a lot of information today with me. Still, I think uh, for me there are some partly software, so some partly technical question open, and I would just like to ask the people here at uh, on the panel, because so we, we have... I would say we have partly operators here. We have um, no, we have real operators here. Two, I would say, Peter and Roch. We have um, base station manufacturers here. We have uh, people here who are working on the management side. So I think we have uh, most of the users for the Osmocom stack, not the end users, but the users of the Osmocom stack, Osmocom stack from different uh, areas here. So. Uh, and the first question I think Harald may not even answer because he answered it a lot today, but uh, perhaps starting with Emily, what are your expectations uh, to Osmocom? So techn technologically or socially or however? Sure. Um, well, I'd say first off, we're very grateful that we can use the stack. Um, and uh, we're, very, yeah, we're very thankful that it's such a... Uh, I don't know that there's this this community that can su support us in uh, in using it. Um, so I think one thing in particular that that we would uh, like to see from from the Osmocom project is um, is uh, uh, quasi stable to stable release um, pattern um, or some sort of not pattern necessarily but some sort of um, uh, uh, package or um, binary that was that was blessed as uh, stable um, or quasi-stable and our reason for that is because as we're trying to develop hardware uh, with software that is itself developing on a nightly basis um, we we kind of end up with a lot of unknown states um, and we get into scenarios where uh, it's not clear to us if the if the root cause of the failure is the change in the hardware the change in the software stack or or combination of the two um, so we end up pinning it to um, certain Git commits, um, but uh, that kind of becomes a little unwieldy and it's a little hard to communicate uh, state uh, verbally. And if we could just say, yeah, we're working on release, you know, X dot Y, uh, it, would be, it would be very helpful. Have, have you wish for a frequency for that? I I don't think I, we have a strong opinion. I mean, I think you know something on the order of, of months, uh, yeah. not years, <laughs> and something okay. on the order, and, and yeah. you know, I think not days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Alexander, maybe the, the same question to you. So, is also for example uh, release dates, or let's say more distinguishable release numbers, is this important for you, or what? What are your aims? Yeah, I was actually. Is working? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I uh, completely support the idea of uh, releases. And uh, again, for us as a hardware manufacturer, it's much easier to, would be much easier to deal with uh, some releases. And 
uh, we actually maintain our own Fairways master branch on some of the uh, Asmocom packages, which we stick to because we know they work because we've tested them. And uh, this is like our releases, but it would be nice if uh, there is like official releases which can be can blessed and then we can uh, just use that. Yeah. So, in um, perhaps one one other question, continuing that to Peter, then is uh, is more stability important uh, for for you, or more the upcoming uh, rise of feature sets? What is the more important part for you in the future um, development? Both, obviously, I think stability is the key. We've been running a network now for three or four years on this, and I think it's definitely improved. Uh, but definitely when we started, things were much shakier than they are now. So as things get towards becoming more stable, uh, it's made it a lot easier for us to do our job because we're generally working in uh, you know, resource-deprived areas where you know, it's, just, it's, hard, it's hard to do anything. It's hard to run a network too, so, uh, and especially with few resources. So as, as stable as the, the underlying software could be for us, I would say is even more important than having... Then, you know, fancy new features. Like if we can make sure it works, it does all the basic stuff it needs to do, and then know and be able to tell folks who are essentially our customers, communities, and end users that you know on this date we're going to have this functionality. Uh, that would be fantastic. So even if it's long periods of time before that, if there is some sort of clear idea and that the roadmap is tied to some yeah some dates, great. But for us, stability is at least for now the number the one. The more important. Thing, yeah. Okay, thank you. Oma, you touched um, the Osmocom stack, I would say, from a quite different layer with uh, CCM. So uh, what are your experiences and what, what is uh, the expectations you have in the future because uh, of y these experiences? It's been uh, overwhelmingly positive, actually, coming from um, a, you know, working with, we worked with OpenBTS initially and... <laughs> this is a lot more stable. Like you see, for instance, how quickly phones attach to the network, um, and just the a number of crashes is much fewer. Uh, we don't run into like you know bad state with um, the entire system going to into lock. Um, and I want to see us moving further along this trend. I want. I, I think this has the potential to be something that's you know carrier carrier grade we're right now running it with a carrier and um i think stability is super important i know you, you can't design a you can't design software that's free from failure um so what i think would be great if we could focus on making the system as a whole resilient so that if one component goes down mm -hmm. the uh, network can sort of resurrect itself and restore to a state that's, mm -hmm. you know, fully operational. Um, and I think that's part of what community seller manager tries to do and seeing that mm -hmm. more natively in the stack. Uh, I think that would, that'd be a huge, uh, boost for stability. In, in the way, for example, that we heard today that there maybe could be plans to migrate to a to better documented or more integrated control interface, uh, could this break partly the interfaces you're using right now? And how much should then the stack be uh, backported in a way? Or what, what do you... It's all... Could, could you handle that if, if, we if have API changes there? Uh, we've we have a lot of integrations. You know, Sism we only moved the stack to Sysmcom last year, um, but we have pretty good abstractions that we can switch. Like one one of my work items is switching from VTY to using the control interface. Um, so you define good interfaces; it's easy to change the underlying uh, transport. So. Um, It's all open source. Um, if there's new features, uh, you know, love to see those um, contributed back by the community as well. Okay, thank you. Harald, would you like to add something to the roadmap you told us about this afternoon? <laughs> Not really. I mean, it's 
No, but I mean, it's 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 un I, I touched those topics. I think. I mean, exactly. we're talking about more stable releases, and we're talking about Osmo TSM Tester as a tool to have like you know nightly end-to-end mm -hmm. -end verification with with test coverage. I was talking about more unit tests. Um, so that clearly goes in that direction. I didn't speak about releases. Um, you know, being a, a, a diehard developer, releases and maintaining <laughs> stable releases is like is is to me is a, is a burden. Uh, I have to be honest. Um, but I mean, we have to find ways to do this. I mean, it doesn't have to be me doing that, of course. Um, so we can find somebody who gets excited about uh, maintaining stable releases and backporting fixes and so on. I'm I'm perfectly happy to to uh, to have that in the project. Um, and the other point is also regarding control interface. I mean, we also discussed that, that basically, yeah, we, if, if there is requirements and now that your code is released, we can see what kind of interfaces you need and, and basically improve on that. Also, a third part that I also touched in the, which maybe was not as explicit in the roadmap, in terms of the resilience, the system restarting itself and so on, uh, I think uh, if you look at the Osmo FSMs in the new VLR MSC code, you will see some of that. Of course, it's all still C, and if the process crashes, the process crashes. But at least the individual sort of logical state machines, they all have like a parent-child relationship, like in a... In a, in a uh, Unix uh, process model, even inside one process, and if a, a state machine dies or something like that, then the parent gets notified and it can recover. And there's always like you can have a default timeout, and then the the, the, the children's state machines get killed and can recover and so on. So there, I think there is some some of that in in the Osmo FS, FS, FSMs as well. So that goes in this direction. Okay. So, Roch, do you the last uh, <laughs> well, statement about that? How frightened are you because of the split of HLR to MSC? Does it change something yeah. to your structure? Have you to adapt? Well, to that? I, I'm, I'm not completely the best one to answer there because I still take a blame for having run an experimental GB proxy for two years, uh, which meaning which put us into a serious amount of troubles after. At the same time, I think it's one thing which is really important is really to have the <coughs> daily um, the daily test. Against uh, against real hardware because I remember that something like two years ago there was a major change in the way we, uh, the the BTS was sending the SI uh, the SI information that broke everything that was not 1800 megahertz and it's meaning it's uh, it's the type of things that could be discovered if we do if we do test meaning on a very regular uh, on a basis, test, yeah. yeah daily basis mm -hmm. uh, against real hardware yeah okay so. Just perhaps just keep the mic and uh, we, we are stepping over to, to my next question. I, only two left. So um, uh, in the beginning, Harald mentioned that uh, maybe the community is not uh, widespread, as widespread and active anymore since uh, as it was in the beginning because maybe that uh, 2G is just outdated for the people and not attractive. Do we have a chance uh, to, to make it more attractive to get outside people entering it again. So well, maybe because of IoT things, uh, could, could this be a direction? What, what could we do? How could we well, do marketing? I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure that actually it's, it's less... You know, if, you, if you look at the number of projects, I think Harald was men mentioned something like 72. Um, mm. The issue is that as we have that huge number of projects, it's really difficult to bring new, meaning new people in. Yeah. Uh, meaning, if you want to deploy the entire OpenBSC, uh, meaning uh, Osmo, OsmoCom environment, uh, meaning today you're talking about a lot of, meaning a huge amount of effort. Um, in the past, all you had to do was basically to compile Osmo NitB, um, find a, find an IP access BTS, and you were you were good to go. So, but I think it's something that we might see again. Uh, with the the project that you launched with the uh, uh, with the 3G BTS, meaning where we 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 will see people taking those, meaning buying those again, run <clears throat> run them and make tests and have fun with them. Yes, oh, maybe this would be a good switch over to Harald. What, what do you think about the three three point five G acceleration project? So boxes were sent. Do you have good expectations or do you think oh? You will never hear anything again from the people. Okay, so maybe just um, I do the politician thing. I don't respond to your question, but do something else first, and then get <laughs> yeah, back to you. your question. Um, <laughs> so um, more in direction what Rock just said. Um, 
the many projects, I agree, we have many more projects in many more areas, though, um, which means, I mean, we have all kinds of projects uh, that are not in the scope of GSM. So people are excited about all these other areas, but GSM sort of is the old stuff that has been around for almost 10 years now and it's not exciting anymore. So I don't really think that, yes, there's more people doing open source mobile stuff uh, under the Osmocom umbrella or outside of it, but uh, in terms of the GSM projects, I'm not so sure. And in terms of 3G, I think it's also too late to get many people really excited about this uh, now, um, uh, uh, even with the Accelerate 3G5 project and so on. So my expectation of the Accelerate 3G5, yes, it Definitely. I see we had lots of interesting applications from people in the community who want to do useful things, who also some of them have started, and we can we see some progress there. So yes, it will help us to get some more community involvement, but I don't think it's a, a solution for the overall problem. Okay. Well, Go ahead. just just one thing. At the same time, uh, meaning this is not a normal project in the sense of it's not LibreOffice, uh, it's not Mozilla. Uh, meaning it's we are talking about a radio. Uh, it's a licensed. Um, meaning it's not something you can easily try at home. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, <laughs> I, th I think we we have to live with the fact that the community is never going to be gigantic. Yeah. But um, maybe then, if you just make the round once again to to Omar, you're, you're st the the CCM is yeah. a little bit the same in this area. So you have to find uh, people who are con or people or organizations who are contributing to that and uh, how to spread the word. Yeah. So if you want to get more people on the platform, you have to make it um, attractive to them, easy to use, and offer them use cases that are going to incentivize them to spend the time to set it up. Mm -hmm. um, so I think more people run services like this uh, that manage your networks, it becomes possible to um, see this in more use. Um, we'll see where how Community Seller will grow over the next few years. Um, that There's more policy involved in that than anything um but i think for the average user if it becomes available on more distributions like i think it's become a lot easier to get up and running now with um with sysmicom with the debian builds that are um or the nightly debian builds that we have you can also go out and reach the ubuntu users the Uh, documentation um, that helps a lot. So right now there's the auto-generated docs that are published, like being able to reference that um, made it a lot easier to um, expose a lot of the, uh, the functionality that um, we integrated into CCM. Um, so yeah, just the more documentation there is, the more people discover use cases and Uh, be able to um, use it for for their own needs. That, that's right. So, so, yeah, so we, maybe this would be even you have to in your in your setups you have to train people to use at least deployments and perhaps to use also part of the Osmocom stack and configure that. So, is is documentation is a very important key to. Yeah, I don't think that's that's not really what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, oh, okay. I think it's definitely important. No, of course, documentation is important. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, but uh, I'm going to take it away from the technical piece for a second yeah. because yeah. I don't really know anything about the technical part. Um, but what I do want to say, first of all, I want to congratulate the community for having this day uh, before the developer conference. I think it's incredibly important. I think that it's something they should continue. Uh, the idea of there being this community is incredibly important. I think that the community itself, though, and we're sort of talking about it more from a maybe technical standpoint, for looking at it as an ecosystem, I think it's in a an interesting place, but a complicated place, wherein the stack is, has gone beyond you know being a hobby and has become the basis for a number of businesses that produce hardware, that produce software, social enterprises, or whatever you want to call it, like us, production networks even. Uh, and I think that that dynamism is really important, but also introduces lots of complications into, I think, what was sort of ideally or, or 
this conceived as sort of this pure, you know, this is just our common infrastructure that we all yeah. share. Um, so I'd like to see somehow more opportunities to have some of these other discussions, more opportunities to for folks to share information with each other yep. um, beyond just the technical piece. And so, for example, like we do a lot of work on on regulatory aspects. And I think there's people in this room who would be great use cases for us to, like how can we all help each other make sure that this thing, Osmocom, stays yeah. strong and stays vibrant and maybe doesn't grow tremendously, but it continues to exist. And that sort of common base from which we're all working continues to grow, become more stable, become more feature rich and so on. And that each of us here has something to contribute to that. Maybe it's a patch, maybe it's not, maybe it's inventing hardware, maybe it's working on, you know, regulation or whatever any of the other people in this room might be working on. So I guess I just want to say that uh, there's a lot we can do to strengthen the community that goes beyond just sort of commits to the yeah. code. Right? Yeah, that's right. So maybe we could start and. Uh, a real round table once a month in Berlin. So unfortunately, <laughs> you're traveling from so abroad. <laughs> I'm not sure. Or extend this event to another day, or have a different yeah, type of maybe, format maybe, for half of yeah, the day. Or there's yeah. many, you know, lots of. I have ideas that we can yeah, talk about. Later. Great, <laughs> Emily. You have some additional ideas to? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing Facebook could do in particular is uh, help with exposure, um, because I think the 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 um, target. Uh, uh, users of of the stack and contributors to the stack are 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 perhaps different people but um but as we get like uh, i mean as it's going more and more towards towards businesses um you know if if it, within the telco ecosystem if there's a uh more recognition of this as a very viable option of how you could run your network um I think that that would then kind of continue to increase its profile and encourage uh, developers who uh, perhaps have their own forks or, um, you know, are, 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 are working maybe in a different, in a different domain to, to move over to this domain and, and contribute back because it's now become a project with more visibility. Um, and I, and I think that's something that, you know, is part of the goal of, of our project under the telco infrastructure project tip uh, at Facebook is to help kind of grow this ecosystem. And we do recognize that Facebook has a, a unique, you know, uh, we're in a really privileged position. We get a lot of visibility um, and it's definitely something that we can uh, work to, uh, to, to share. Thank you. I think that would be a good opportunity. To do so. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, I was always trying to, uh, let's say, uh, push the idea that Osmocom needs more promotion and more marketing. And, you know, uh, Harold remembers I brought this topic up in every Osmodevcon previously. And <laughs> I tried to do my, my best. And I'm, I'm glad that. Uh, we now have like partners like Facebook um, helping with this because I do believe that, you know, uh, us, um, open source is basically working on the laws of big numbers. So on 100 users, there is one contributor at best. So the more users we have, the more contributors we have. So to have more users, there should be more visibility. It's you know it's typical it's typical process so and uh um harold recently wrote in one of his emails that in germany you say that i'll say self uh promotion uh so self Self promotion stinks, yeah. Self promotion stinks, yeah. Okay. Yeah, self self um, praising, self praise, self praise stinks, right? And uh, uh, I guess that was kind of, unfortunately, I would say, curse for the project uh, because I think it needs more self praise. Um, so um, compared to. I believe failed project OpenBTS, which received a lot of promotion and still a lot of people are referring to OpenBTS, uh, even though in technical, technically I believe it's uh, um, far um, 
uh, lower than than Osmocom right now. So there should be more uh, promotion. So I would appreciate that every if if everyone in this room and everyone watching us and reading us will go out and speak at the conferences, you know, mention the, the project. And uh, one interesting thing which happened to OpenBTS is an O'Reilly book published. So if there is someone who want to want to volunteer to write a book about Osmocom, I believe that would greatly help uh, promotion of the project. So um, that sort of work, but it's, it's doable. Any volunteers? Free drinks this evening? <laughs> Not Maybe not them. now, but <laughs> I just want to put this yeah. in, uh, um, I would say, in people's mind that mm -hmm. this would greatly help the project because a lot of people start from a book. Um, and uh, in general, documentation is very important. Like, Asmacom documentation is very hectic, um, as we all know. So um, that would be great to improve. And But uh, to go back to the uh, question of uh, how to get more contributors, I believe, so again, another thing Harold recently wrote in an email is that, uh, you know, uh, we are working on this project uh, professionally, so, and we have to eat, so we need to get paid, which means that, uh, like, as... Uh, the number of contributors will also grow as more money gets into this uh, uh, into this project, and so this is uh, the other side of this. It's it's a community project, but it has a commercial side. The more money gets into the project, the more contributors can be paid, can and more code can be written. So um, let's make more business with this. You know, let's deploy more base stations. You know, let's let's get this into production and uh, let's get more money flowing into this community. So more people can uh, have not only have fun in their free time, but have fun on their paid time as well. So you already answered my last question, which was uh, how can we do real open source? So no open core model, no crypto software, just do real open source and still make a living. Oh. Not driving, as I hear sometimes, not driving big cars. Not sailing the biggest ships. And yeah. uh, I was actually, uh, another thing I, w I wanted to say is that uh, when I just started working in open source uh, solar communications, um, I wrote a blog post saying uh, solving an, an inefficiency of, uh, of telecommunications. And I think this is partially um, what uh, answers, uh, partially an answer to your question is that. Uh, the communication industry is very inefficient because every company reinvents the wheel, reinvents all the standards. And as Harold mentioned, um, it's like thousands of pages of documentation. So it's thousands of lines of code. So every every company in the industry invests millions of dollars in re-implementing this wheel. So what I really want Osmacom to be is I want it to be the last implementation. So no more after that. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think uh, I don't think anyone else will implement GSM after us. So I think you're right. <laughs> but I hope it will go beyond GSM. But I um, think that could be a good marketing yeah. standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, the point is um, there. There is an efficiency, and as a commercial company, uh, we want to have a good solution. So for us, it's important to have this community-driven project because it helps us reduce our costs in terms of investment in R&D because this is a common platform. Like, look, everyone has GSM, right? Uh, just having a good GSM stack is not a differentiator for us. So. Uh, we want to build on top of this, and that's what we are doing. And actually, part of uh, so Harold's asking, so why is the number of contributions decreasing? Well, partially it's because the code is good. Yes, not not I mean not at all not at at all, all the places, and we'll discuss this tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> um, but in general, it's good enough for many people to just run it and uh, to build on top of that, right? That's what Rhizomatica has done with their billing system and everything they just built on top of it. That's what CCM is doing. That's what we are doing. So yes, we are contributing in places where code doesn't work, but in most cases it just does work. 
just just a short short uh, addition. You earn your money by selling BTSs using the Osmocom stack. That's so part that's that's that's, that's part how you how you could uh, afford to contribute yes. to the stack. Yeah. yeah okay. That's, just that's just to, money, to give yes. to, to give the audience also the idea of how we make money because it's it's uh, for for me the, since since I'm doing open source is uh, the, the, always the question where to make the money from so it's always a question of a little bit of subsidizing and yes. so it's it's in a way it's also you you're selling the hardware to subsidize your contribution to the stack also. yeah you can you can put it this way but we are essentially <laughs> um how to say um scratching our own niche in most cases it's uh our, so it's not so much of subsidizing this development as, as much as it's like solving our own problems with the money we earn from uh Selling base stations, selling support mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. this uh, networks, you know, building uh, building networks because we're not only selling base stations, we're actually going out and building okay. networks for operators, okay. um, as well as like full fledged networks, and we also sell just SDR hardware. So like we have like multiple streams, just selling hardware, <laughs> selling base stations, mm -hmm. selling networks, uh, but yeah. Because we have the need for the software, we obviously yep. have to invest in uh, some of the development related to it. So, Emily, how is Facebook making the money to... <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think um, going to the question of like how, how can you make money at open source, I think I'm probably like one of the least qualified people here to speak to that because there's a lot of like entrepreneurs here and, and people that are that are making money for themselves, where I work for a big company and I, I just, um, I benefit from, from what they have done. Um, so, so I, so I don't have any answer to that question, mm. but I do think that, um, there's a lot, um, you know, the, 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 there's a need, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of, um, maybe a lot of software solutions, uh, uh um, are, are more incremental or more, um, luxury, uh, but to connect people who are like unconnected or very underconnected is, is definitely like a, hu a huge, it's not incremental. It's, 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 you know, a huge leap. It's, it's exponential. Yeah. So, um, so I think, you know, some of the things that Alexander spoke to, you know, just more self praise, more promotion, um, it won't only serve this community and this project and the software, but also the people who are, who are unconnected currently and, you know, that Rhizomatica and, and uh, Fairwaves and uh, Facebook are trying to, to help yeah. connect. Okay. Thank you. Peter, I mean, yeah. in your project, you're even not... It's well, we a, have not, a different. Not, not even, business you have a complete model. different so, yeah, business. So we're, model, so we're basically a not for profit organization. So we uh, survive, as it were, by you know making enough money to continue and pay people and do what we need to do. Uh, generally, through grant funding, uh, we're looking into more sort of like development aid funding. I think that for this group, actually, as I've been here today in the last couple of days. I think that that's a, a piece that we should look more into. I think that uh, the the sort of <laughs> other than this sort of aberration of what Facebook is doing, I think that the like corporate um, the amount of money that the businesses that are using this are going to be able to generate and put back into the community, mm -hmm. while it has been an important lifeblood, is never going to I don't think is never going to be a huge amount until all these other sort yeah. of pieces get put in. Um, and I think that there might be an opportunity to look at other types of funding streams that aren't sort of based on this provides value to a business who then s sells a product and then puts some sort of portion of that money back in, or you're self-subsidizing by essentially selling software that uses the stack. I think that that has sort of some sort of a horizon to how much that's ever going to be. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that there's really important... Um, shift going on around the connectivity of people who are unconnected, um, which is over half of the, of the planet and 2G um, is a great solution for those people. And there are increasingly interesting business models and there's increasingly becoming opportunities for small operators to partner with large operators or sort of not-for-profit operators to begin expanding. Um, and that creates a lot of value. Um, 
And I don't think right now we have any sort of concept of how we can capture some of that value and stick it back into this project. So the like contributions that we've tried to make here, which are, you know, minimal, yeah. but we've always tried to at least help out with whatever we can have come from, from grant funding that we've yeah. gotten to do work and we had a need and then we sort of put, mm -hmm. pushed money into the, the development of certain pieces of things that we needed. Um, I think if we were more targeted about that, we could actually probably raise some pretty good money from yeah. even the German, you know, you could talk to the German government about this, the, yes. the development aid of the German government. I know I, I, people are very skeptical about this, but it can actually work because this is becoming a priority for governments. Uh, and it's all about the way that you frame it to them. So if you say, hey, look, as part of what we need, we need to, you know, contribute X amount of money into this thing so that we can more efficiently use satellite backhaul mm -hmm. uh, for this. And that's going to require this many hours of development work. And, you know, these are these can be multi-million dollar projects in, in many cases. So I don't have exact plan for how this can happen, but I do think it's a, a space to look into mm -hmm. um, because this really is beginning to fit into larger sort of almost geopolitical uh, ambitions of different nations and even companies as well that they're attempting to to connect people and how can we also make sure that that's happening with open source software and it's happening you know through means that will give people more control over over that destiny no? maybe that's not a bad approach to really attach in your countries where you're living and working to to get funding from governmental funding We have not even looked too much in that at, as being a small company right. there, but I think uh, for the project itself, for the sake of the project, it would really help. Oh. Yeah, um, so deployments, I think, are one way that uh, will you know, get more people using the code base and hence get more developers. So uh, Facebook's in a unique position that um, it has good relationship with operators, and through these deployments that uh, we're doing with with the Osmocom stack, um, we we get them to think about different ways of operating their networks that can potentially change regulation in the future that makes more deployments possible. So um, even with the last few sites that that, that we're seeing, like um, the operator. Uh, was actually them, themselves, they were able to roll out more sites because they're involving the community. And this is a stack that can be managed by the people living there. Um, and there is a there is a need. So the people in these communities um, is effectively were able to lobby um, the regulatory bodies to um, sort of hasten the process of, of setting up a new site. So the more we see this, the more we see communities take ownership of their networks um, and we see deployments that are credible with operators and we're promoting the Osmocom uh, solution for its stability. Uh, we create precedent in other places. Um, and there's certainly, I think the incentives are there, like telecom is it's huge in terms of its potential for, um, you know, operating a business. Um, so if we can put that, those tools in the hands of, of people, um, you know, and, um, uh, make it simple enough for them to run, uh, that will have a huge impact in, in getting more people connected. But this means then the revenue stream for the people who are developing the code would be by supporting the operators or um, how could that work at the end? Well, the people, so there's, there's need, you know, need, needs the mother of invention. So when people are actually able to deploy their networks and they have a need that is going to differ from the community that's right next door. So you're going to see Yeah, this is free open software. You're going to see uh, organically people contributing back okay. to the stack. Um, and they're doing it because they're financially driven to do that okay. for their needs. All right. Yeah. Harald and Rock, if you're in, if you're in pressure, we have to stop here. But uh, maybe... <laughs> <laughs> I think, Rock, you have, you have a working business model, how you work, so... 
Tell well, me a little bit about well, it. Well, I, I think actually we almost have all the same, meaning um, <clears throat> uh, Facebook is going to deploy base stations in order to run a communication service. Uh, we deploy base stations because we run a communication service. So I think the way I mean, this business is going to continue to exist, mm -hmm. it's because you have people operating those networks that have a need for support, and those are going to contribute to by paying back the BTS vendor or <clears throat> by going back directly to funding uh, Osmocom mm -hmm. in if in, if if they have the, the level um, yeah the technical level in order to. Yeah. Um, to do that directly. Okay, thank you. All right. Your yeah. statement and maybe a final word also. No. And uh, no, no statement. No, no final statement. Word. No statement. <laughs> <laughs> I have an important announcement or question though. But maybe if you want to say something to close up and then. Uh, the question about how many people are going to the restaurant? No. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, that that I had to ask also. Heike asked me. Um, But you're going to do this. Uh, first, uh, let me, even if it's uh, self-phrasing stings, because I'm from the same company, Harald, thanks a lot for doing this the whole day. <laughs> I learned a lot. And uh, so I just hand over to you for the final words. Thank you. Well, the final words. Um, uh, definitely, it. I think it was a success to have this day. I'm... Not quite sure uh, whether the talks were too introductory for some of the audience. I had sort of the feeling that uh, maybe we should have uh, been a bit more technical, but I mean, that's feedback you can provide uh, basically offline until the next year when we try to do this again. The reason that we started with a single day, I know, of course, it's sort of stupid to travel intercontinental for a single day event. Um, uh, the reason why we did it for a single day was basically because we had to try it somehow and, you know, um, renting a venue and preparing and uh, speakers and so on and so on for multiple days when you have no idea if anyone ever shows up is sort of um, risky. Um, so we thought, well, okay, let's do it for one day this year. And actually, to be honest, until a couple of weeks ago, it was looking like we have to cancel the event because nobody really registered um, until like three weeks ago or so. And that's, of course, doesn't give us any real planning horizon. And um, also in terms of capacity, I mean, initially it was like, oh, my God, you know, we have like seven people in a room for 60 uh, or a room for 50. And now we end up having more than 60 people and having to tell people, no, you cannot come because the room is full. Um, so what I would like to see is a little bit more um, like planning when registering for conferences and events. I mean, I attend a lot of technical conferences and I don't think I've ever registered on any of them without a couple of months of advanced ticket booking because it's not even available, the ticket on, 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 a, on a short notice in many cases. So, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> Make the conference yeah, make the conference expensive. Well, that's something I didn't want to do. But anyway, so that uh, just some explanation to, to some of the comments that we have been seeing. So definitely, I think with the basis of this year, we can do something that's more than one day. Um, uh, next time we do uh, an Osmocom conference. Um, and um, okay, yeah, again, I, I had my thanks in the beginning uh, this morning, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Thanks to everyone. Um, but now we have one final important question. Who here will be attending the or uh, yeah who, who will be attending the social event let me just take a quick head count is, uh, steve yeah can you please count 